<laughs> Johnson's told me what you intend. As it happens, the man who held me is the same one that you seek. His name is Silas Thatcher. That fancy lad is our slaver. Don't let his velvet tongue deceive you. A crueler and more vicious creature I've never known. What can you tell me of his operation? He hosts at least a hundred men, more than half of whom are redcoats. All this for some slaves? <laughs> Hardly. The man's a commander in the King's troop, in charge of the Southgate Fort. We need to find a way inside. Hmm, let me think on it. In the meantime, I'll attend to our final recruit. John Pitcairn's our man. I'll take you to him. State your business. New recruit. More kindling for the pyre, eh? Well, go on then. How'd you manage that? Did you forget, sir? My commission is with General Braddock. When I'm not attending to you, of course. One good reason. I shouldn't kill you right now. Were you planning to announce yourself? Or did you hope my men Sir, wouldn't notice your arrival? If you'll allow me to explain. Ho <laughs> ho! By all means. I should like very much to hear this. I have not deserted, sir. I am here under Commander Amherst's orders. Show me a letter bearing his seal, and you might be spared the gallows. I have no such thing. The nature of my work, sir. It's... It's the sort of thing best not put to paper. Hey, them. General Braddock? I suppose I shouldn't be surprised. Wolves often travel in packs. Master Pitcairn won't be here for but a few weeks. I shall return him to his proper post once our work is finished. The devil's work, no doubt. It's bad enough my superiors have insisted. I grant you use of Charles. But they said nothing about this traitor. You'll not have him. Edward, listen to reason. We're done here. See these gentlemen out. Well, that didn't go as I expected. And to think I used to call him brother. What now? They'll chase us off if we try and return. We're done with this camp. As luck would have it, so are they. Come along. What are you planning? To steal Master Pitcairn. What? You'll see. Now, when I give the signal, you're to distract Braddock's patrol and lure them into a dead end. next. Perhaps down Marlborough? No. Its residents are too content. Their homes are nice, their days untroubled. What of Lynn or Ship Street? Yes. Those fresh arrived are often soon in dire straits. They're more likely to seize upon an opportunity to fatten their purses and feed their young.
thieves and scoundrels one and all! Fire on you and your false war! <laughs> After him! <laughs> Unhand him, Edward. Uh, you again. Let us go. And John Pitcairn with us. <laughs> I will not have my authority challenged. Nor I. Put them all in chains. Now, John. Traitor! Go on then. Join them on their fool's errand. And when you find yourself lying, I assume broken, you've good reason for causing all this madness. What is it you require of me? I'll explain everything on the way. If I may, I was curious about your past with Braddock. You two clearly have a history. Edward was one of us upon a time, and I considered him a close friend. He was brave and bold in ways few men are. But everything changed at the siege of Bergen op Zoom. We had lost the fortress to the French, and were in the midst of egress. There was a skiff hidden at the port with which we planned to make our escape. As we drew near, a young man and his family came upon us begging for safe passage. I consented, but Edward refused. The young man called him Craven then. So Edward killed him and all the rest, even the children. To this day, I don't know why. Was this the first time he'd struck out? Or had I simply never seen it before? Either way, things were never the same after that. We campaigned together a few more times, but each outing was more disturbing than the last. He killed and killed. Enemy or ally, civilian or soldier, guilty or innocent. It mattered not. If he perceived one to be an obstacle, they died. He maintained that violence was a more efficient solution. It became his mantra. And it broke my heart. I had no idea. He hides it well, and intimidates into silence any who discover him. Those who persist have a tendency to find... misfortune. And we should stop him. I suppose you're right. But I maintain a foolish hope that he might yet be saved and brought back round to reason. I know, I know. 
It's a silly thing to believe that one so drenched in death might suddenly change. I'm sorry to have brought us up. It was not my intent to sour you. Nonsense. We are brothers now. There should be no secrets between us. This business with Silas confuses me. If Britain stands any chance of pushing back the French, they must ally with the natives, not enslave them. Silas is loyal only to his purse. That his actions harm the crown is irrelevant. So long as there are buyers for his product, he'll continue to procure it. All the more reason to stop him, then. My days are spent in Congress with the locals, attempting to convince them that we're the ones they should trust, that the French are merely using them as tools to be abandoned once they've won. Your words must lose their strength when held against the reality of Silas' actions. I've tried to explain that he does not represent us, but he wears the red coat. He commands a fort. I must appear to them either a liar or a fool. Likely both. Take heart, brother. When we deliver them his head, they'll know your words were true. So, a question for you. Why medicine? I'm supposed to tell you I care for my fellow man, right? That I chose this path because it allows me to accomplish the greater good. Are these things not true? Perhaps. But that's not what guided me, no. For me, it was a less abstract thing. I like money. There are other paths to fortune. Aye. But what better where to peddle than life? Nothing else is as precious nor so desperately crazy. And no price is too great for the man or woman who fears an abrupt and permanent end. Your words are cruel, Benjamin. But true as well. You took an oath to help people, did you not? I abide the oath which makes no mention of price. I merely require compensation, fair compensation for my services. And if they lack the required funds? Then there are others who will serve them. Does a baker grant free bread to a beggar? Does the tailor offer a dress to the woman who cannot afford to pay? No. Why should I? You said it yourself. Nothing is more precious than life. Indeed. All the more reason one should ensure they have the means to preserve it. When I know something, you know something. Gentlemen, I believe I found the solution to our problem. Or rather, Odysseus has. How do you? Are you a new guy? The Greek hero, you lobcock. Allow me to explain. We enter Silas' fort under the pretext of kinship. Once inside, we spring our trap, free the captives, and kill the slaver. <laughs> dodgy, dodgy. I like it. Then, let us begin. First, we need to find ourselves a convoy. Should be here soon. We'll attack on my signal. Understood, sir. If we time this right, we can catch them all unawares. Hear ye! Lieutenant Colonel George Washington has led troops in an attack on the French. The French have protested to our king and diplomatic negotiations.
Charles. You and Williams serve as vanguard. Let no man reach us. What about me? You and John will follow from a distance and keep watch over us. I'll signal you when I have need of your services. We're here to help you, along with those held inside Southgate Fort. Free me. Not until we're inside the gate. I can't chance an inspection of the gate going wrong. I'll see you safe. You have my word. Do you know anything of Silas' operation? How many men we might expect? The nature of their defenses? You must be rather important to him if you are given your own escort. Sir, we've enemies ahead. Shall I engage them? No. Let Jonathan and Thomas take care of it. As you wish. I wish you'd trust us. Though I suppose it's only natural for you to be wary. So be it. Engage the enemy! Goddamn it, docks! You, in the car. I need to Let no man car. reach us! Looks like you're to meet the Reaper! God, man. Bringing fresh meat, eh? Of course. Come here. Only say the word and I'll cut them down. One moment there. Engage the, the enemy. Who's your Come officer? Looks like you're to meet the Reaper. Let no man you reach us! Looks like you're to meet the Reaper. Uh -huh. On your guard, man. Bringing fresh meat, eh? Of course. Come here. Only say the word, and I'll cut them down. One moment there. Me and you. Who's your officer? Engage the enemy!
All clear. Good evening, gentlemen. State your business. Delivery for Silas. Go on, then. See? I'm freeing you just as I said I would. Now, if you'll allow me to explain... Let her go. But she'll give us away. No, she won't. What's the plan? Free the captives and avoid detection. What of Silas? He dies. They know when you're ready to strike. Recruited. Arrived from London just last week, in fact. And you ought to patrol with us. So said Silas. Mm. I assume it's all rather straightforward. Watch for disturbances. Ensure order is maintained. Mm. Merchandise? If you don't know, you don't need to. Just do as you've been told to stay out of my way. Here most days? Aye, uh, on occasion we'll catch a swamp that's trying to bury contraband in the sea.
An hour of quiet was all I asked. Instead, I'm awakened not ten minutes later by this cacophonous madness. I expect an explanation, and it had best be good. How? How did this happen? My precious merchandise set free! It's unacceptable! Rest assured, I'll have the heads of those responsible. But first, first we clean up this mess! Seal the fort, kill any who try to escape. I don't care if they be one of us or one of them. To approach the gate is to be made a corpse. Am I understood? Push them back. Go on, Hatem. We'll hold back the guards while you deal with Silas. Did you receive any training? For the order! Why would it feel like this? Reload! Reload! He's here! Benjamin! Stop the interloper! Glad to have Kill you the with. intruders! I could use some help! Back! The order stands united. He's the one responsible! Kill him! Who are you? Name's Haytham Kenway. You don't know me, but I believe the two of you are well acquainted. I made a promise to you, Silas. One I intend to keep. What happens now? We wait. And not for very long, I suspect. It's been several weeks now since we freed the Mohawk prisoners from captivity. I had hoped their leader might make contact, but there's been only silence. My men grow restless. They want to know what comes next, and I do not have an answer. Lee alone remains active, pursuing leads however slight. He stalks the city streets and scouts the bordering woods, hopeful that he might make contact with one of those we saved. There was a woman there that night. It was she who helped the others to safety. If we can find her, I believe I'll have my answers. So, I watch and wait, hopeful that my true mission might finally begin.